He's a friend of Cyprian's. And like two years ago, a year ago, I was on a show. He wanted to talk about spiritual warfare, you know? And I was mm. like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure he didn't, you know, have an agenda or whatever, but I know other people, if they were to look at that, they got, you know, start salivating, rain the hands, like, man, we're going to hear him and slam whatever. But I'm like, yeah, spiritual warfare is like, you know, what's going on with you and your neighbor? Okay, so hello, welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And tonight I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father, what is something, maybe in hindsight, looking back, that you bought that was a complete waste of money? Like something kind of like, something kind of really like, ooh, that was really, or maybe did it like a stupid investment or something like that. And mine's super silly and small, so it doesn't have to be anything serious, but... I have so many of these. I know. <laughs> All right, I'll go first, just to set the tone. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, know. set the tone, because I need to probably, the ones that are at the scale, top of my list, I probably need to di dial them back so that so I'm you're not gonna look scandalizing at the top of the anybody. <laughs> you're going to want to look at the top <laughs> yeah. of the list, you're going to want to go down, and you're going to go down yeah. a little bit more, okay, yeah, sounds go down good. a little sounds bit good. more than that. But <laughs> I remember one of the first times, and I spent a lot of stupid money on a lot of stupid things, but I remember one of the first times being like, this is a really dumb idea, but still not like stopping myself from do it. But I was probably 18. I was making like $7 an hour. And I saw, I think my paychecks are probably like $120 every two mm -hmm. weeks or whatever. And I remember spending $25 on a, like at a costume store of like a Captain Jack Sparrow hat with like dreadlocks built in and stuff. And I remember just being like... <laughs> This is so dumb. And I did it just so we could like wear it one time. Just like because we saw it, we're like, this is so funny. And then I bought it. And then I remember at the time being like, this is like one sixth of my paycheck. And I think I did wear it like two more times. And then it ended up like like in the back of my car until I crashed that car or something. And then it got thrown away in a dumpster or something. So I was like, wow, this is. I remember that being like a very like this was a complete waste of money, and that was that. So, what about you guys? Oof. I'll go. I'll I'll go. I I mean, it's insane the number. It's it all, it's like I'm like ugh. It's I'm almost disgusted with myself by how big my list is. Uh, but I'm gonna go way down the list, and I'm gonna say a um, a pool table for my house, like a billiards table for my house that I used, I think, probably four times uh, total. Uh, but it was, but the whole idea was that like I had this space in my entryway and it wasn't like I had people over all the time, but it was complete and utter ego. Like I went and bought this really incredible billiards table and I had this little, and I put it under there and it was right as you walk in. Complete and and then I and then I, I paid to actually have pool table movers come and move it into the next house I was in, and then I left wow. it in that house. Wow. Right, it was a complete, absolute, absolute waste. I have so many of these things, but that one's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I'll just go with a recent one. I um, not too long ago, I was on this kind of like product productivity kick. I was like, I'm going to be productive. You know, I'm just writing this book. <laughs> I'm writing this mythical book, you know? So this happened recent. And um, I, I was on Pinterest and I saw this ad um, for like a foldable Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be great. I can... Hook up to my phone. I'm traveling. I'll be just, you know, yeah. just gonna hit. I'll do like three chapters on the road, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
Yeah, like I used it maybe 20 minutes. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate this thing. I hate yeah. this thing. Yeah. Garbage. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah those, pro- those productivity um, things. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah it's man. Hard. It's hard. I can't imagine how many weight sets and exercise mm-hmm. bikes and oh. whatever, like, get slim in 90 days like books and stuff like that like Please. how much money people like waste and i mean i'm i'm right there with them i mean i've never like bought like a weight set thinking i was just going to get ripped and then it just sat and collected dust in my in my garage or whatever but so many of those like um i don't know i have a million others i can't really think of another one off the top of my head never buy exercise equipment gym membership yeah gym membership that's it. Never, ever, ever buy exercise equipment. Ever. Yeah. I mean, just a gym membership. I'll take your word for That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a house, uh, like being in your home, very few people are disciplined enough to, uh, to keep a workout program in. You've got too many distractions at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really hard. It's really hard to do any work at home. I've learned that over the years. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if I know I don't know if um well there's this lady, Elizabeth Gilbert, I think is her name. She wrote um mm. Eat Pray Love. And she's mm. a total she's out there crazy. Hip hippie. But, well, you know, when it's like what's you know like when a pagan is so far pagan, they're actually still like kind of true. They're like right about right. a bunch of stuff. <laughs> right, right. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But um, <laughs> she talked about there's a lot of stuff that she said, supposedly, I don't know if this is true. So, but uh, supposedly you can drink the milk of a goat who has eaten poison ivy and become immune to poison ivy. Um, I've heard this. Yeah. But anyway. One of the other things that she said that I found extremely true is like, don't do work. If you work at home, don't do work in pajamas, like get dressed, yep. like, treat your work yep. with respect, you know, like, and it's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I can 100% get behind that. And there's a couple other small things that she said, like that have been like, absolutely. That was a movie, true. right? There, so there's a book and, love. and there was a movie. Yeah. I think, and shout out to Father Rodemir, because I think he was like, yeah, this movie, it says, it's, <laughs> he was telling me it was terrible. It's like, it's more like, gluttony fornicate and something else <laughs> oh yeah yeah no she's she's yeah. a, a worldly woman to say the least yeah. and it's um, uh it's julia roberts isn't it yeah i, I mean yeah from yeah. what i remember i've never seen it but yeah um yeah, yeah i remember if i was like get rid of that thing <laughs> that <book>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was also the lady i talk about her yeah. because she was one of the ladies that talked about um she had a story an idea for a story and had all these details, very specific details, uh, a mm. husband or something like that. Turns out his father was rich in Brazil and then mm. died. So they go down there collecting the inheritance. It was very specific. And she did not pay attention to that story. She didn't feed it at all. And she kind of felt it leave. And then one of her friends called her. It was like, hey, I have this idea for a story. And like rattled off pretty much the same exact story to her like just like da, 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 da. so she's like so stories are independent of us and you know she has all these like it's like your muse comes to you and talks to you and it's like okay well, so we talked about that before but yeah. but but that's true but that's true though that's true that's in spite of her craziness that's what i'm saying yeah, sometimes true. when people are so far pagan they're like they're still they're absolutely well, tapped well, broken stuff. clock is right twice in the day yeah. Well, and I mean, well, it is the we've had that we had the conversation about spiritual principles early on in the project. Yeah. And it's like, I think, you know, there are some things that are like, I mean, the idea that cert that like if you're going to participate in a certain activity in your home, that that space should be sanctified as in set aside, right? And yeah. that, like, when you approach that space that, yeah, your clothing should be different, right? Like, I mean, when, when we do Tipica in our home, my wife wears a head covering, oh, yeah. you know? But she's not wearing a head covering uh, in our the home beach. besides that, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, again, it's just one of those, she's so out there that mm-hmm. there's no correct, like, it the information is correct that she's seeing 
but when it's filtered through her, it comes out wrong. You know, she's getting the wrong things from it. So her humility, her patience, her love is two different things than what we're talking about when we're talking about Christ. Like those are two different, those are two, like, have you heard um, the communication process model? Um, mm -hmm. Like, so if I say the word green chair to you, what do you think of? Okay. A green what, chair. Okay. Like what, what type of chair? Like, is it like a, a plastic chair, plastic with those classic plastic chair, like dark green, light green, dark, uh, dark green. So, yeah. So then this is the point at which I would say to you, well, I was thinking of a light green recliner. Like, okay. like the thing I'm saying to you has Got to it. go through the communication process model. And when Got you it. come out with your thing, the thing that you popped in your head, when I said that is two different things. So mm -hmm. Elizabeth Gilbert, I say to you, oh, well, you know, this is just a time in which I'm learning humility. Well, she's learning humility is like, she's Melissa saying, Gilbert, isn't she the lady who played Laura Ingalls? Okay, it's Elizabeth. Oh, is is it? What's this girl? Elizabeth Gilbert. It's the name of the. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going phoneless on this one, so I can't look it up real quick. But uh, the lady I'm talking about, I've been talking about, is the lady who wrote "Eat, Pray, Love." I could be wrong, so I'm sure. I'm sure if I'm wrong, I'll hear about it. But that's okay. But uh, Liz, Liz Gilbert. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Elizabeth Gilbert. Yeah, Melissa. So, yeah. Laura Ingalls. Yeah. So, two so I think holding. what I think I think Andrew, what you're talking about is that that it's all about your that sort of where we come to consensus in our communication is through our orientation. What's your new? So it's like, yeah. Well, I'm saying that if we're if two people are oriented toward the same thing, so if we're both looking at the same thing, it's much more likely that when I say green chair, you're going to be thinking about the same green chair that I am. And if we're both reality, oriented toward Christ, and I say humility, chances are you're, we're probably going to be closer in terms of our mental 100%. framework of what that means. Yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, the information that she perceives, or that whoever Alan Moore perceives or whatever is like okay sure you do there are spiritual principles here but mm -hmm. the thing you're talking about when you say you know the hierarchy of you know spiritual entities it's a different hierarchy than i'm talking about you know because whatever whatever but that's neither here nor there and um for the record i was actually thinking of a green lawn chair that's what i always think of but what's like, a lawn chair it's like the real cheap plasticky ones. It's like the ones with, you know, you sit and you play bridge around like a fold a folding table and everyone's got lawn chairs. You know what I'm talking is it about? A full, is it a folding chair or like a one-piece chair? I'm thinking a one-piece chair. That's what, what I was thinking. You thinking about. That's the same thing I was thinking, yeah. I know, but for the purposes of this discussion, I have to change the thing I'm oh, talking about. Okay. Because okay, like, this is what I tell people when I'm like, women be crazy. Because interesting like, enough, sure. I heard uh, a recliner. What's that? You were thinking of a like like in a house, yeah, like inside. Enough. Yeah, because I have a green leather recliner in my in my wow. study, and that's okay. That's what I was thinking about. Hmm. By the way, you're back green, in your office. Green chair. I just realized oh. that father's back in his office oh, this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to yeah. we're back. We're truly yeah. back, everyone. Yeah. Okay, hmm. so we were in the middle pre-recording of a good conversation, and I think that that's what Cyprian was wanting to talk about tonight. So I think we should probably get back to that, but I don't remember what it well, was. Well, your, your, your question is in a way, your question is in a way related. Um, because something that had, uh, something that has been occurring to me during this, and you could probably hear that I'm losing my voice a little bit, which magically just happened in the middle of one day, apropos of nothing. And it's been going on for like three or four days at this point, but it's been, it, it's among the things that have that. So this is my, well, it's my third Lent being Orthodox. And then there was one when I was catechumen. And so one of the things that has become pretty clear to me is that there's a, a clear shift that has happened in my life on all of those occasions where it, it, I almost am, I almost am forced to like really step back and do nothing like whether or not I want to step back and like do not I'm talking about like career wise 
things that were going on, I almost have to actively step back because it feels like it really does, like in an objective embodied way that there is like a little demon following behind me. And like, if I build something, he'll just like kick it over. Like not even, not even destroy things, not nothing like that, but just this really like annoying, like, oh, I'm just going to throw this in. It things that are usually easily fixed, but that it's like every temptation, man, like to where I'm tempted internally towards frustration, anger, depression, all of these things. Oh, Oh. am I, am I saying something here? Is this a thing? I was, because it happens to me. (laughs) I was on a four, I was on hold for two hours with a thing I've done before. And then the lady who I ended up having to talk to, who, by the way, I'm a captive audience. I can't say no to her. Like it's government work. I have to be, I have to talk to this lady. She no joke. Like I found out everything about this lady apropos of nothing. Nobody was at, she just was like for an hour and four. And I missed another phone call because like (laughs) I set aside two hours for this call. I was on the phone call for three hours and 45 minutes with this lady for no reason. This is something I've done and it's never taken that long. And it, it, like so many, like just like narratives running through my head of why I'm a victim. Oh, this is, this is, and like, then my kids start freaking out that my wife has to leave. So I'm watching three kids while on the phone call with this and they're all freaking out Mm -hmm. for no reason. I'm like, glory to God for all things. Because that's anything else is going to be a cuss word. And I can't do that. Like I has to be just glory to God for all things because this is ridiculous. But what are you going to do? It's Lent, baby. <laughs> but my question, my question is, my question is this. And, and it's kind of related to the eclipse situation, right? So this eclipse started to happen. And then, of course, everybody's like got their theories and you hear all these end time predictions and everything but i'm like okay during this lenten period it can't like was i experiencing this like is it just happening globally that everybody's experiencing it but people who aren't orthodox aren't able to connect it with lent or is this like something that specifically i'm experiencing because i'm orthodox like i'm trying to understand this but it's like really palpable and real i'm not imagining it i i am very self-aware i know things that are going on in my life it's not just because i'm fasting because i do fast it's just very weird it's so, very weird i mean it, it, interestingly enough you know andrew's point with i don't know if remember it was called over to window whatever it was but communication window i mean it's it's appropriate in so far as um, wavelength and all that stuff, however you want to use it. But yeah, there's um, as much as is possible in this realm, there's objective, measurable things that are happening. So like Lent, you know, the, you know, the second largest body of Christians, the Eastern Orthodox Church puts a concerted effort to fast and to pray. And that concerted effort leads that second largest body of Christians, you know, to uh, celebrate the the defeat of of death and hell, you know, with the culmination of, of Lent being being Pascha, you know. Um, and so, you know, we all we all talk about like the purple demons, and they come out, and yeah, it's a thing, and. It's a thing because we're we're collectively fasting and praying to whatever degree, because <clears throat> even the person you know, like Saint John talks about at his you know his um, God inspired homily about you know the person who's fasted, the person who didn't fast, you know, the table set, mm. right? But if you're in the body of Christ, it's it's even if you didn't fast, you know, we're all kind of moving together, you know, in that sense, mm. um, and what's happening during Lent, not just the prayers, but even during Holy Week, you know, Christ is crucified. He is, you know, the one who suspended the heavens is suspended upon a tree. You know, that is happening. And it isn't just, you know, a remembrance, a memorial. It isn't just kind of, you know, um, 
an effigy that we're putting up. It's like, there's something actually like happening in, in, in that time and space. So yeah, that, I, I, that is a thing, but that's also separate from what I think you're talking about, Supreme, in the sense mm. of um, people have these experiences even outside of Lent. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, in the vernacular that we use in the spiritual life, we call them temptations, um, and those temptations, they are, they're brought about <clears throat> precisely by the, by the fallen ones, um, who are capitalizing on our passions and it's all, you know, to the glory of God, right. Um, for our salvation. But the thing that's hard for people to understand is it's not like it's, you know, when you start getting this realm, people, all their weird latent, um, kind of Calvinism comes out and like, well, so is this all just like a rigged chess game and it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. I mean, um, and I try to explain to people um, the reality is that God is keeping the fallen ones at bay. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for God keeping the fallen ones at bay, including non believers, to be frank, you know, like people have no idea. Just you think you're in hell, there's always something worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and so they're, um forgive me do we ever did I ever give the kind of um i'm legend analogy on here before have i talked about that mm-hmm. i don't a, think so it's a great image if you remember in i am legend the you know the will smith movie or whatever mm-hmm. you remember at the end and he i can't remember he's like in like that laboratory or whatever and he's got like mm-hmm. he's behind the protective glass and then the one zombie vampire thingy that's you know been stalking him because he killed his wife or whatever or daughter whatever Mm -hmm. it was and you remember how um you know there's this exchange where will smith's like kind of freaking out and it's like the thing is kind of pacing back and forth and you know resting the kind of hitting the 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 window trying to get at him you do you remember Mm -hmm. yeah right yeah that's a great image for what i'm trying to talk about it's it's they're constantly around you. They're constantly around mm. us, um, monitoring spirits. They're spirits that are assigned to it, to everyone to watch them and to and to note your movements and to note the things that you are stumbled by, to note your progresses and your failures, right? And there's other ones that are just, they're always looking to destroy you. And mm. if it wasn't for Christ's mercy and you, especially, you know, we're talking about uh, the body of Christ, being covered by baptism, like St. Mary of Egypt says, the grace of baptism and the, the the preserving grace of the church, they would just rip us to shreds. So <clears throat> so that reality of just the constant, just let me at them, let me at them, then every once in a while there's this, you know, kind of lifting of um, the glass or the veil, or however you want to look at it, and, and stuff peeks through. And, you know, God is aware and God handles all of it. And God uses it in the life of his children for their salvation, their purification. But it's not like the danger room. It's not a simulation. Like it's, you know, it's real. Mm. What's what's happening to us is, is real. And, um, you know, this is where God giving us things so that we can, you know, become stronger and grow is a very, is a, is a strong reality. Um, and it's a reality. Here's the thing. Because, you know, free will is, is a big part of this. This is why the whole, you know, um, <laughs> salvation salvation being a difficult thing um, because man has free will. And, you know, we've all sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. And God has made a way for us to find salvation by calling on the name of the only begotten son, Jesus Christ, you know, the whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the the question is, is what does that mean to call on and to believe? Um, And all those things have to be, um, if you can, if this makes sense, they have to be um, reconciled with our free will, right? Meaning, you know, people, um, people don't understand, (laughs) 
people understand it's one of the biggest problems with things like Calvinism and things like that is that it, it negates these fundamental aspects of what it means to be human, um, made in the image of God, and that's that, that's that freedom. So temptations are part of the way that God cooperates, you know, or, or calls us to cooperate with the work of salvation. Christ makes the way. Christ dies for us to show us the way to paradise, to be with him, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't um, take away our freedom. Mm. And he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, um, he doesn't do it for you. And not, a lot of people don't like to hear that, but I would just submit to you, you know, Peter, you know, you can only wash your feet, Peter, if you know part of me or my kingdom. And, and yeah, you know, Peter says, okay, Lord, right. Um, that's what I mean by that free will. It's like, you can't save yourself, right? Only Christ can save you. Um, however, you have to understand that Christ will call on you to open, to give yourself freely to that process. He doesn't force you. Sure. Right. And so when he says to Peter, you know, let me wash your, your, your feet, you know, that's what I mean by he does it. You can't wash yourself. But at the same time, what does he say? If you don't let me do this, you have no part of my kingdom. So you have to choose to, to work, sure. to participate in that. I mean, that's, that's what is salvation, right? Salvation isn't going to a place. Salvation is becoming like God and being united with God, you know? Um, have, you, have you guys heard because of something that you said at the beginning, Father, it made me think of this story where there was a monk who was really struggling and like really, really hard. And he's like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing this. I'm just not handling this well. I'm, I don't like the cross that I've been given essentially. Mm-hmm. And, uh, basically fell asleep and had a dream in which an angel was in a room with him with all these different types of crosses and everything mm-hmm. like that. The angel said, okay, if you don't like your cross, the one that you're holding right now, which one do you want? And the monk looked around and found the tiniest little cross. So I want that one. And the angel's like, that's the one you already have. And then the monk's like, oh, right, 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 right. And then woke up. Like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and he's like, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's this, uh, this idea it is that the i am legend that's a very good i think very helpful image father but this idea of the the removal of that glass Mm -hmm. like in a in a uh like out of love the removal of the glass Mm -hmm. for the sake of our salvation Mm -hmm. i think it ties into some of even some of, I think, the comments that that were there about our last show and this idea of, like, it isn't... And it's the devouring mother, too, right? Mm -hmm. It isn't protection. It isn't good. It isn't love um, to, like, super double reinforce the glass and then make it so that you can't see through it Mm -hmm. and you can't hear through it so that, like, no, whatever it is on the other end can't get at you because one of the things that I've noticed during this Lenten season while this phenomenon has been going on is, and it was very palpable to me. There was, there was one situation that was super frustrating and interestingly, it resolved itself within like 24 hours, but it was super frustrating and a huge blow to my ego, Mm -hmm. like a huge blow and Mm -hmm. just tempted me toward pride, tempted me towards anger, all of these things. But there was a moment where I was I was having coffee and talking to a friend of mine here, and it just like occurred to me, like I I I actually caught myself in that, like I caught myself in that moment and was like, oh, oh, I'm being shown something here, mm-hmm. like I it's being this is being yeah. revealed. To, whoa, how prideful am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, oh yeah. wow, this is, and it's almost as if that wasn't done, that wouldn't have even be been shown to me in a way. Yeah. So, like, I think, I mean, there's so many ways. It depends on how you guys want to do this, you know, because we could talk about how you discern between, um, you know, a temptation coming and you know kind of participating with it versus like an attack 
and there's that's overlap. a good place to start. You know, that's there's there's, start. there's overlap, but there's a distinction between them. You know, um, but the other thing I want to say, man, I don't, I almost don't want to get too off the rails, but I think there's another side of this, which I wouldn't mind talking about this either. Sorry, kind of throwing out a lot, but. Um, you know, there's a reality in which things are really over the top right now. But some of that over the top is is part of what we need to do to kind of read, you know, read the signs of what's going on. So um, expand on that, please, Father. That's interesting. Well, there's there's measurable, you know, this is where it gets um the distinction between, you know, the insidious and the salacious needs to be important here, but there is a measurable uptick in demonic influence in people's lives. We can talk about why that is right. But there's a, there's a measurable uptick. Um, And it isn't always what people think it is, but um that is because of where we're at, not just in regards of how far we are as a society from keeping the commandments of Christ and, you know, just trying to um, follow, you know, basic tenets of, of morality, quote unquote. But also, too, because, you know, there's something that's happened on on the other side of things. I mean, there's a boldness that the demonic is enjoying which again it's it's objective i mean it's something that it's not it's it's undeniable you can you can measure it we can measure it through media we can measure it through um even if this makes sense to people not just the increase of certain incidents but the exposure of it right and so certain things what what you know you got to keep in mind the demonic doesn't like to be exposed it likes to hide um and the reason for that is because it, it you know there's it wants to steal kill and destroy and so um that's why so much of you know like we've talked so much about in this project so much of the over the top stuff is is kind of the bait right because the the more damaging reality is what happens when t- people take the bait of the over the top stuff. Now, all that being said, um, this is also why many of us, you know, we're looking back and, you know, so no one loses their mind, the terrible things that happened since COVID and the summer of love and all that stuff, all that stuff, you know, it's terrible, but we also, those of us who have had our eyes open, we see it as a blessing because it was a call to repentance does that mean that, you know, God caused all the stuff? No. What he does is he just pulls back and he pulls back. He says, okay, you don't want me, then I'll remove myself. And then when that happens, then people see what's really going on. And then for, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, they, they wake up and they begin the process of repentance. And this is important because, when we, I just want to say it's important to have a different understanding of like the demonic in regards of the demonic in the life of the believer and the demonic in the life of, of those who are, you know, pursuing Christ. Because ultimately, for those of us who are, you know, um, committed to Christ, we've been, we've been united to him in baptism and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're, we're living a life of, you know, repentance and prayer um for us all of these things are 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 they become means by which we're purified just like you were talking about Cyprian, like in your life so it's like you would have never seen the vainglory like you had of you if you hadn't gone through that no, situation never. But, does that, but does that mean that those forces that maybe had provoked or whatever weren't weren't there no 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 i mean they're they're there um And the reality is, is that, you know, we can choose to either A, see it for what it is and come to a place of repentance, or we can choose to just, you know, slide down further into our passions and double down on things and, 
And that's, I would say, closer to what people should start being concerned about in regards of, and this is, this is being a bit more explicit about one of the core purposes of our project. That's one of the big problems about the, the swing to the right is that you're talking about there's a, there's another side of, you know, a society becoming possessed. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if we are familiar with, and I will stand by this, this is, this is good, whatever, but you know, like I'm not the first person who says, you know, like, um, and I say this out of love for my people, whatever, but like what's understood to be, it's not accurate. It's, it's, that's part of the problem and we don't need to turn this into a whole debate. Maybe one day we'll talk about it, but what's quote unquote perceived to be African-American culture, right? Popular hip hop culture, things like that. It's demonic. It's, it's demonic. Right. And you see that the slow slide from just kind of starting off talking a little bit about the reality of what happens, you know, in certain segments of, of quote unquote, a, a, a culture. Right. Um, and then that becomes the gateway to begin letting in just those things which allow a people to become possessed. So in the context of hip hop culture, it's like, which is, it's beyond quote unquote black culture, right? It just, just that, that ratchet culture, that's how people, you, you see people in effect possessed because they're, they're giving themselves over to, you know, debauchery, violence to that degree and that impact there. And then what it leads people to, to commit that opens them up for the, for the demons to have rights. Mm. And you don't, you don't need to go into someone's house and have them crawling up backwards like a spider. And, and like, that's, you know what I mean? It, it really becomes a matter of, you know, how does that play out with those kids? And then those kids do it. You see what I'm saying? And then you start seeing, the impulses and the movements of a people group being demonic. So that's, that's the left side of it. That's, and that's actually oddly enough, kind of easier to deal with. Yeah. The other side of it are, you know, the, the Nazis and, and, and how the German people became possessed, right. And how the Russian people became possessed through Bolshevism, you know, that, that movement of a people group, to where they're moving and thinking and acting in ways that in other times prior, they would have never imagined themselves being given over to. That's a macro scale of what happens to someone on a micro, mm. right? Which gets us back to this whole thing. I don't know if it's going to make it in the pre-cut, whatever, but the selling of the soul, like you don't need to be Robert Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, sure. Some people, you know, what's his, what's your boy's name? Um, tr Travis. Uh, Travis Scott. Travis Scott. Oh, he's you know, full full blast. Sold. Yeah, like like Travis Scott, Jay Z. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's those guys in quote unquote underground and hip hop who they're clearly involved to whatever degree in a sophisticated way. Father, forgive me. Like at a in a sophisticated way. Like like yes, yes, like, yes. like formally ritualistic occult. Yes. Okay. Yes. There there's that, but you don't got to be all the way to that level. It, it's right. it, it's the kid listening to Little Yachty, you know what I mean? Yep. yep. And letting yep. his yep. nine year old brother listen to Little Yachty, and then they're doing mm -hmm. all that stuff. You know what I mean? So who by who by the way I would say is is like the next level of sophistication of that because he's much more subtle and it's hyper sophisticated. You know what I mean? But in some ways, in some ways more dangerous it's almost like jay-z's here and sort of that generation and then you've got travis scott and then you've got Lil yachty who's like hey well, the mainstream can embrace him you know what i mean well not only can the mainstream embrace him but he's accessible like super you, accessible like when you look at jay-z and right i mean i don't even know how he flies the way he does because some of that stuff that he gets away with it just kind of shows that people don't really track the way they think they do mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. But the way that he gets away with things, it's like that's not accessible. People aren't going to live right. like him. You know what I mean? But oh, they you, can't. No, people can't, can't live like no him. No one can. Yeah. But as you but as you start getting down, and then you know you got a million and one you know ratchets who are just mm -hmm. in the mumble rap stuff, whatever. And it's just it's just it's so ubiquitous. 
then it's like, well, that's kind of the thing is anybody can now attain that because they got a cell phone right. and they want to play right. the knockout game or they want or they want to do whatever right. it is to get that little bit of notoriety. But that's the selling of the soul. And you don't, which is like you said, in some ways it's more sophisticated. And it's more true mm -hmm. to how the mm -hmm. demons work. You know, like, yeah, there's those cats who are actually on a ritualistic level involved with, you know, with fallen spirits. But for most people, it's as simple as I don't care and I'm just going to do whatever everyone else is doing. And mm -hmm. that's not only just as bad, but in some regards, it's like worse, right? Because it's more insidious, mm -hmm. which is what we're trying, trying to get at. Well, but all well that's it's, uptick, it's almost all like that's uptick. Like, f forgive me, Father. It's, it's, you know, we were talking about like people who of my generation when I was younger and living in LA and living in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I would see, and to a certain degree, was I participating in that? I mean, I was a DJ. You know what I mean? I was throwing parties. I wasn't there to be an actor. I ended up on a TV show, not, you know what I mean? Not because I was trying to, but like watching the people who would come in especially women but men too who would come in young and come into hollywood and basically get exploited and t and taken advantage of and like they weren't bereft of agency mm -hmm. they had gone there sort of understanding and they quickly understood like what the game was and they and they chose to participate but like you don't have to go to hollywood to do that anymore like you could do only fans from your bedroom mm -hmm. And wherever you are. And I think that that's, that's the change that in some ways, like. But that's it, how the you, demons you, are winning a whole, that's how the demons exactly, are winning the exactly. world and society at, in, in general. Because again, it's not an apps. It's not from a, a lack of God's love. It's people are coming out from under God's whatever, uh, whatever participation in in the love of God and His protection that is a, that is afforded to people, they're just they're coming out from under it. And before anyone's you know screamed and calls me an ecumenist, let me just remind them what I was talking about. We talked about this last year in regards of um, the power of, of God. And so even though there's these fundamental problems with Protestantism, it's not about that Protestantism is right per se, but it's just the power of the of the scriptures. Let's say, yeah. you know I mean, it's like. If you approach the scriptures with humility and sincerity, even though you're interpreting it wrong and it's super dangerous, you know, God isn't, you know, it's people's wrong idea of God. God isn't this capricious. It's not Allah. It's not, it's not Zeus who's capricious. Maybe I love you. Maybe I don't. You know, God desires that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So you're, so when you're talking about, you know, it's like one of the big things these people have, you know, and they get mad with this ortho quacks and they're like, oh, you know, you make salvation so hard and blah, 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 all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, not really. But the reality of it is, is that, um, you know, God is trying to work with everybody. Now, are people wanting to work with God? No, not necessarily. Right. But, you know, if if people are reading the scriptures, and they're trying to do the best they can. Then, you know, God is God's way to work with them. Now, I'm saying all that to say this whatever was there, you know, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, that's gone. I mean, you got people now who are more apt to be familiar with poltergeists and demons and all that stuff than they are anything about, you know, Bible stories or, or, or faith in Christ. You know what I mean? And so all that's important because all these subtle ways in which people just kind of like, look, man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I never... I, I don't know. I, I know because of how it went down last last episode. I just I don't want I don't want a whole battle over this. But <laughs> like, it's just I was showing my wife that it's like, what is this? It's just the way that you know weed everything so ubiquitous and just like I never thought I'd see the day. Like, I Ozzy was right, Greenleaf. You know, someday the whole world will love you. It's like, but I'm just saying that because. It's just wild how all these things, which give the devil's rights in, in ways in people's lives that I don't think they understand, you know, it, 
so does that mean every single thing that you that you do wrong, you know, the devil's going to kind of pull the trigger on you? No, not necessarily. But what but what's kind of what becomes what becomes really problematic is as people try to l- repent and live a life of a fallen Christ, they have a bit of a dickens of a time at that point. And because yeah, you may not be possessed, but there's all these doors which have been opened and the devil's how the devil has rights on you in this area. So it's like you know, you got these obstacles that are laying in front of you about just the way that you approach things. And if you're wanting to follow Christ and keep his commandments, it becomes really difficult because your your tastes, your predilections, your thought processes, you know, it's like, here, here's, here's one, self-pity and depression. Like, if you're used to drowning out yourself with, you know, food and drugs and sex and all those things, and then you want to turn to Christ, it's going to be really difficult for you because, you know, it's, it's kind of like you've been smoking for 30 years. Can you quit? Yeah, you can quit. But that, that guy's been smoking for 30 years. You know, I'm going to tell you from experience, just quit quitting, whatever, unless God gives you a special grace, which he does, but let's go. It's real difficult for someone to quit smoking if they've been smoking for 20, 30 years. Hmm. So if you've been habituating yourself to certain things, if you've had these idols in your life, idols in your life, and all of a sudden now you want to be idol free, there's going to be a little bit of a fight. And not just because it's hard to kick your passions, but the devils are going to fight you. And this gets us back to what CP was talking about because, you know, how do you discern this is an this is purification, this is an attack? Well, prayer and really learning to pray and, and learning to become watchful. This is this is important. This is in our tradition we call it nepsis. Learning to become watchful, vigilant over the movements of your heart, right? And that's part of the problem here is that everything I've just rambled on about, the biggest fruit of that is people are indifferent to their salvation. Mm-hmm. they're indifferent to their inner life and i am even talking about sometimes you know religious folk yeah i go to church yeah, i do whatever but you know beyond checking the boxes of going to liturgy and doing whatever sometimes they're just indifferent and they don't realize right because they're not being watchful right and so since they're not being watchful just over and over and over again you know it's like there's that squatter problem in New York. That that's nothing compared to the demons once they've taken residence in your heart and your mind. You know, they want to really it's really hard to get them out of there without a real fight, you know? And so that indifference that comes, you know, I say this with with, with all mercy. It's like I know for some people they it, they really struggle with that. And so I'm not saying the devil made me do it, the devil made me do it, but like you'd be surprised how much the devil's involved with what's going on with you because when you find yourself wanting, you're like, I'm just tired of this. Right. Why is it that every time you're tired of it, next thing you know, something's popping up or you know what I'm saying? Um, That's the type of thing that the salaciousness gets your eyes off of it. So you don't even know where the real battle is. You know, the battle isn't about, poltergeist activity, you know, things flying across your room. The battle is the indifference to, to the suggestion from God, the Holy spirit, the, 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 the willingness to follow the commandments. But I, I think that's what, I think that's what I was trying to say pre recording. Is it continue to keep the, um, all of it is the distraction and the stuff, the fact that this stuff is being, supposedly like we were talking about the diddy the p diddy thing and then that documentary about the nickelodeon tv shows all that stuff coming out as a way of like continuing to just be like oh well the conspiracy theories are it's the god you know it's like we it's meant to like i think kind of keep people indifferent to christ in the sense of like okay so you know this movement that we've been building on or whatever which by the way doesn't really seem like christ oh it turns out it's right and like I think that the indifference to salvation, that's the one way it could manifest on the right. You know, I'm not sure. You, does, you mean, forgive me, Andrew. You mean kind of like the conspiracy red pill movement mm-hmm. is what you're talking about? The conspiracy yeah. theory red pill movement. The red hats. The red hats. 
And so the red, the red the red hat says versus the blue hairs. The red hats versus the blue hairs. You guys can have that. The audience, whoever wants to use that, you can use that. But I I think that I think you know is if it manifests one way over here, it manifests so that way over there. And I think that that's one way it does over there because ultimately, at the end of the day, like the people who I've known who have gotten ultra red pills and who haven't really sought repentance because I've known a couple of people who have, including myself, that got really really into putting the cart before the horse as far as these are no longer serving Christ. I'm not using these to serve Christ. I'm using this as their own means. You know, mm -hmm. um, they just end up getting very, very, um, you know, we'll put them all on an island and nuke it, you know, put, you know, put them all on mm -hmm. Epstein's Island and just nuke it. And it's like, okay, well, where's Christ in that? Christ isn't in that, you know? And, um, you know, that's just one more distraction. It's just one more, one more. It's like, and it's a powerful spell too, because I've seen people kind of pull away from it and say like, you know, um, I'm speaking to one person in particular who I don't really talk to anymore, but would miss a Sunday. And then that next time I see him, he's all just right back into it again. It's just right back. Into, well, did you know that there's a joint task force happening right now headed by, you know, whatever, whatever it's going to expose. It's like, okay, sure. But you know, where's Christ? Like where's Christ in all of this? And mm. yeah, well, well, yeah. I, I just want to say real quick. I mean, the the thing that's important to understand too is remember the master. He says because lawlessness abounds, the love of many grows cold. And how do you where do you want to put the emphasis on that? I mean, in this case, I think the thing is is like lawlessness abounds, right? And so you know, the love of many grows cold. It will the son of man find faith and he comes upon the earth. And this is the thing, you know, um, this is one of the reasons why I think it's one of the many reasons why people have this weird fun. Well, it's not weird, but this really strong visceral reaction to orthodoxy in the negative sense, because it's otherworldly and it really, it, it, it challenges and it offends people's sensibility mm -hmm. of, you know, justice and what's right and what's fair and all that. And so when you really get down to, well, so what does it mean to be more of the It means to be a member of the body of Christ. It means to take the commandments of Christ seriously and to be a, you know, a follower of, of, of Jesus Christ, right. You know, for, for salvation. So the martyrs, right, what's their deal? Well, the martyrs, some soldiers, some women, some men, kings, beggars, every, every you know, class of person you'll find as a saint, right? You have robbers who are saints, prostitutes who are, you know, not active, obviously, but every walk of life. But, you know, the largest class of saints are martyrs, right? Why? Because... Fundamentally, they bear witness to their trust in Christ. And that's why they lay their life down, because they say, I believe the teaching of Christ. I believe the reality of Christ and that this this world, this life is not my. Is not my fundamental hope and goal, so I will willingly suffer the loss of my life or damage to my life, meaning pride of life, whatever that is, humiliation, because. This is me proving and me. this is me hedging my bets on Christ. You see what I'm saying? And that flies in the face of even moralistic re religious Christianity. Because moralistic religious Christianity says like, yeah, well, this is the good way. And, and you know, all the twisting of Jesus that, that we see happening. But that call to really follow Christ, no matter what, vengeance in mind, they'll say the Lord. Yeah, nothing will challenge you more if you just kind of stop and thinking about you stop and think about that at night you know um you know nobody wants to do it i know i'm not saying to do it but it's just it's a good exercise you know like if you're a father like could i forgive someone who hurt my child you know what i mean like if christ called me could i right we're not talking about stopping <laughs> see here's the thing we're not talking about stopping right because christ would have you stop the person from hurting your child. We're saying after the fact, what do you do? Right? This is tough. This is this is tough. This is why it isn't just a matter of just, you know, kind of, you know, a high-minded true signaling. 
This is this is this is real stuff, you know. Um, and when you look at the the martyrs, the, let's look at the martyrs from the Bolshevik uh, revolution. You know, I mean, some man, those saints, the catacombs, brutal stuff. Uh, Saint Dionysius, you know, confessing and forgiving his brother's murderer. You know, um, I just, I just, <laughs> I just can't imagine what people like what do you say to that except for amen or you say no i'm not i'm not down with that and i think that's what a lot of people do they reject it because it's just it's too much you know it's too much and that is that's in many ways too i think where the warfare happens especially with the demons um because that question you know we all experience that that temptation in the wilderness, like our master did, if you would, it's like, well, or the garden, how do you want to look at it? What did God really say? Is he, is he really going to help you out? I mean, uh, this is kind of extreme, you know, and, and that temptation to doubt it's, it's a real thing. And it, it calls for us to have that type of, um, this is why you have to work while there's still sun. Meaning not just when you're alive, but also you need to work that when you can, because when temptation comes, so much of your work before that temptation is revealed in the temptation, right? When you see yourself stumbling, you know, it's like, man, I really didn't put in the, you, you can see, or you can see you didn't really put in the work. You know, you can think about how God was trying to get you to work on this passion, and God doesn't try to get us to work on our passions and our sins arbitrarily just because he's, you know, oh, let's, let's kind of buff this edge. It's like, no, that's why it's your salvation. Like God calls us to work on things because it's needed. They're, these are parts of our heart that have become infected and, and diseased. And so the passions are these diseases that fundamentally damage our being. And so he will allow things to come so that we can, you know, do the work of having the surgery. Now, how do you tell between, okay, this is this is a time of purification testing, I, I'm under attack. Well, I would say one of the first things is, you know, obviously like prayer and watching, right? Because the practice of watchfulness begins to help you to discern, right? Um, where the devil is tempting and trying to undermine the work of God Versus you can feel a testing that's that's coming because God doesn't tempt, right? Like it says in James, God doesn't tempt, but he does allow us to get tested. But what's the, dif what's the difference? You know, like the testing is about us having what's latent and what needs to be revealed to be, to be brought forward, right? Whereas the temptation is all about like if there's a potential to fall and if it's possible, the devil, he will have you fall. You know, if you can. Um, and so there's levels of it. Like I would say to someone, you know, um, there's some things where it's like, you know, let's take, for instance, an easy one of like, you know, lust, whatever. Well, that's clearly not from God. You know what I mean? God's not setting you up for to fall in those areas. God doesn't do that. Right. So there's no need to try to discern that. Um you're just justifying yourself. If, if, I mean, there's no need to discern that, right? But there are things like right-handed temptations, temptations from the right, you know, like you're in kind of a moral conundrum. You're not really sure what you should do or not even more, but like ethical, let's say, you know, it's like, well, I could do this. I could do that. And you're just, you're, you're really struggling with something. You're like, well, well, what's going on here? And oftentimes, you know, there's this process of just learning to resist, 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 right? It says in James, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So um, I'm trying to think of a good example, but, you know, you have this ethical issue that you're wrestling with, you know. Like, would, you, would you give money to an obviously intoxicated homeless person? Sure, right? Or like, oh, how about this one? This is, this is, thank you. This is a good one, actually. Sure. You're, you're, uh, your your kid's sister you know who's been 
in and out, in and out of, of, of substance abuse or whatever. You know what I mean? And this time around, she's like, okay, I really need help, blah, 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 right? And you're like, you know, um, I generally, you know, I'm trying to not, um, you know, enable her, this and that. But there's a special circumstance and like my my conscience is kind of gnawing on me. I think it's my conscience, you know. And I'm starting to feel like kind of some anxiety about do I let her come and stay at my house for the weekend because blah, blah, blah. Right. But last time I did that, you know, she ended up doing something really terrible. Are you, are you following me? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of wrestling with what to do here. Well, if you can, you know, you just kind of push away your inclination. Because typically speaking, you'll find like you'll find what the answer is in your heart if you, especially if you pray. But oftentimes we don't want to do it because we don't want to face having to say no to our little sister. Are you following me? You know you should, but you don't want to, right? You don't. You, the guilt is killing you. But you say, "Mom, well, I think I just need to stay the course and say no." And so you know you kind of like resist, right? It's still kind of gnawing at you. You resist. It's still gnawing at you, right? And then it kind of lightens up, and then oh, she got a ticket to New Mexico, so doesn't so don't worry about it. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, sure. it was a temptation. It was a temptation because you resisted, you resisted, and you waited, and then God brought the resolution. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, that same scenario, but you resist, you resist, you resist, and then it's like, okay, she's here, and Let's even, to make it easier for people, let's flip it around. You don't want to help her, let's say. You don't want to help her because for whatever reason, it's inconvenient, all the stuff. You know what I'm saying? But your conscience has been like, you really like, you really should, you probably need to step up and help her this time, right? But you don't want to because you're going out to see, you know, Jimmy Buffett this weekend. And it's What's like, with you and Jimmy? You know, Jimmy, you know. <laughs> it's just the timing's terrible. You know, Why he's you a doing... hypothetical person, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah, the timing's terrible. So you resist, you resist, you resist, and it's still brought to you. Then, that, then what it is is the temptation then will for you to be um, either you're going to be like the rich man and put Lazarus out, you know what I mean, or you're going to bear the cross and be with, you know, Joni this weekend and really like see what God has in order to help, right? That resisting brought you to a place of, okay, clearly this cross is in front of me, right? Because God didn't take it away, right? I didn't I didn't just, you know, kind of dive into my predilection of wanting to just get rid of her and just go see, you know, get on with the other, uh, what are the parrot heads? Um, yeah, yeah, parrot heads. You know what I mean? So that, that, that's, a, that's one way of kind of discerning these things because as you start living the spiritual life, right, which is the basis of spiritual life, first and foremost, is is becoming, um, and listen to what I'm saying here, you begin to now follow the commandments of Christ, and that begins to affect the way that you behave, first and foremost, right? But once that's happened, and you know, you, you're, you're getting to a place where you become, quote, unquote, a moral person, more or less speaking. Now the inside of the cup is where it starts really getting tough. Sure. Because like I've said, you know, it's one thing with Christ's help to get somebody to stop being promiscuous or get off dope or do those things. It's another thing to get them to actually clean the inside of the cup. It's a lot harder to, to, to help someone work through their pride, their vainglory, their self-righteousness than it is to get them to stop sleeping around and doing meth. I know that sounds crazy to people, but that's really where the battle is. Um, excuse me, that's really where the battle becomes very difficult. Is to Because that's the other side of why people, I think, have a very naive and dangerously naive view of what salvation is in regards to if I just believe something. It doesn't mean anything to just like what they mean by believing. You know what I mean? Because if the inside of the cup isn't clean, that was the problem with the Pharisees. They had moral life externally, but the inside of the cup wasn't clean. So this is why orthodoxy is what it is, because the emphasis on orthodoxy is the inward cut, cleaning of the cup. And that's why, you know, I'm glad for all the 
ortho bros and everybody who's coming into the church. Cause again, you know, bring the fish in, but just know you got to get cleaned and you being cleaned is not you getting all the right political sociological talking points to where you can get, you can be at coffee hour and fit in with everybody. That doesn't mean anything. It's, What's going on with you inwardly? And are you learning to be watchful? And are you learning to keep your heart clean before Christ? Um, that's where the real work is. And that's that's why orthodoxy is the truth, because it alone transforms people, right? Um, you know, we all have had that experience. I know I did of being an evangelical for, you know, 5, 8, 10, 15 years. And like, yeah, you believe in Jesus, and yeah, you're experiencing God to some degree, but you're not changing. Yeah. You're not changing. Not in the way that you know deep down inside like you need to. Right? So all that well, is that's, all that spiritual warfare. Forgive me. That forgive me, Father. That that point right there about not changing, I think that's been you know the I've been saying it for a long time. Their degeneracy is your trap, right? And that's like underlying is this piece. And like, it's interesting that that Diddy was brought up because before before you came on earlier, you know, I was talking with Andrew about this particular situation and the salacious. We didn't talk about the salacious details, but I think everybody knows kind of what these salacious details are. And I was mentioning to Andrew that, you know, I mean, if people go and read the lawsuit that his that his ex Cassie put against him, that sort of started this whole thing going, and then if they if people know my previous life and they read that lawsuit, uh, they could probably put two and two together when I say that I have like personal, firsthand empirical knowledge of like these situations when it comes to Diddy, like firsthand. I'm not. No, this is not from anybody else. This is like eyes on the situation, my own eyes, ears, and all other five senses, and that most of this is completely exaggerated. However, like that 90% of it is co- of what's being said is going on or had gone on, the salacious details absolutely did not happen, did not happen. And I, I, will, I will 100% put, put, because enough experiences tell me that it did not happen. However, what I, do, what I have found interesting about this whole thing is because those salacious details are there, it's like, it's like this two-pronged demonic sword to where it's like Diddy's being punished, right? And like the chickens are coming home to roost and he's, it's being said that he did things that I assure people that he never did. Um, mm-hmm. but, but like what he actually what it does in some ways is people are allowed to focus on those things and then but i'm like wait but can we focus on what he actually did like can you go back and look at the lyrics of like bad boy can you look at how he turned generations away from christ and toward the world like can we look at go and look at making the band right look at where those people are at right now like he he destroyed they, their lives were destroyed because this man has has spent a career serving the prince of this world in like the real way mm-hmm. in making people love money and love things and want fame and want pride and all of this and want to be like him and it's almost like if you oh he's terrible because of the these salacious details because if I actually looked at what he actually did, then I actually have to look within myself mm-hmm. because I'm not a sexual abuser. I'm not doing all of these. I'm not a, a artist. They're going to cut us if I say the actual word, right? I'm not doing all of these things that they're saying that he's doing, but am I prideful? Yes. Am I like looking and focused on the world and think that being rich is going to solve all my problems? Yes. Do I want a Bugatti? Yes, red pilled ortho bro, mm-hmm. right? Do I think that those things that am I am I like looking towards these? Yes, you are, and that's that's his real, that's what he really did. Mm-hmm. But if I but the demons are like no 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 look at this he's bad because of this he's not bad because of the thirty years that he spent. But you know what it, you know to to kind of like bring your point home, I think that's one of the big things about orthodoxy. It's like people get. 
I mean this in the best way. You know, they get struck by the beauty. And I, I don't mean the prettiness. I mean the beauty. They see for the first time true beauty. And that's reflected in the honor and the dignity and like all the stuff that you see. But then something happens and you get people really seeing what you're talking about. And they start seeing, man, I've been proud, man, you know, I am a glutton, you know, man, I am, you know, I, I, I'm a fornicator, you know, whatever. And they really start seeing that they're sinners and not just sinners and like, yeah, everyone's sin, but like, oh my gosh. Right. And that clarity is what begins the process of transformation because it's then that people realize I need help. I need help. Right. And that's, I think that's also why for us, it's so, you know, it's so pertinent to continue to hit, hit hard. These, it's not the externals of orthodoxy. It's not the externals. The externals are good, but you got to go deeper because this, transformation that we're talking about doesn't come just by saying the magic words, right? It, it, it comes through working out your salvation with fear and trembling. And that's, or just by fighting the wokes, forgive me, father, by, yeah. by fighting the degenerates all day. It's like yeah. that um, video that we shared in the, the, uh, the thread or whatever of that Christian rapper. That's like, I'm going to blot, blot the demons or whatever. Uh, and that the one's demon so shows good. Up. Yeah. Oh. And the demon's like, what's uh, up, bro? Uh, <laughs> where's that fa fa at? Where's that fa fa? You know? And it's like, that in so the good. end, he's just like sobbing into the mic. Like, and he's like, that was a demon. That was definitely a demon. And then he's like sobbing into the mic, just like saying, I need you. Yeah. God, I need you. And like, I mean, uh, I think that, that that's like one of the glasses. Like, so then the he is legend when the glass is like taken away and they're actually like, oh, whoa, whoa, this is not a figurative thing. This is not like a, you know, and then to bring it all really home, it's like that meme we had a long time ago where it's like we thought what we thought spiritual experiences were going to be. And it's that meme of like the, the. It's like the lights going off in the neurons. And it's like this person's like like central nervous system just like being in there in like some kind of yogic pose or something. It's like what spiritual experiences are actually like. And it's like a dog sitting at a table by himself with like a cupcake and a candle and like one birthday hat. And it's like, boy, I really need to change. I'm like, I have a lot of problems or something. Because speaking from personal experience, I don't think that a good portion of the repentance I would have experienced would have come from any other place than oh, wow, there's a deep need for God. Like, that's that's really it. You know, the externals of, like, marching off to take Constantinople back, you know, like, the idea of, like, you know, the whatever political or red pill agenda is happening, all that stuff is, like, you know, I'm sure some of it's true, I guess. But even then, like, even my own interactions with, which are few and far between, but actual interactions with, you know, forces that are not of god it's always comes back down to this is not like um i can't like talk crap to them i can't like i can't like oh you know i'm a i'm not scared like no i mean this is this is a real thing and i am scared and it's like oh wow okay i just need god like i just need to whatever your prayer rule is add to it whatever scripture you're reading add to it like i just need to yeah but i forgive me i just i think that's something else to really another way of point, putting this across because to me part of the problem with the conservative political um emphasis almost exclusive approach in regards of you know christ and christendom and orthodoxy mm -hmm. um one of the reasons why it's so problematic is it's um it really it's the same thing where someone, you know, like in that video, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the, the Christian rapper, like you're talking about, and he's like, the demon, you know, he rolls up on the demon, he's going to cap the demon, whatever. And the demon's like, oh, yeah? Okay. Right? And it's because it, it, it's, it's, 
what people don't understand is that um, when someone becomes so, um, I don't want to say ignorant or naive. I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but the reality is, is that you don't understand where the battle is really happening. Right. And so since you don't understand where the battle is really happening, it really sets you up for something even far worse. Like it says in the book of Jude, um, even the Archangel Michael, when contending over the body of Moses, did not bring a reviling accusation to the devil, but, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Right. So, you know, like there's this whole movement with a lot of these people, um, charismatics and things like that. God bless them. But, you know, deliverance is kind of, a, you know, I don't know if it's just my algorithm or whatever, but, you know, I, I just see it, it seems to be being talked a lot about exorcism. What is, what is, oh, so deliverance is exorcism? Yeah, okay. when people say deliverance ministry, they're usually talking about, like, exorcisms and dealing with demonic, you know, the demonic in the more um, kind of overt way. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, is, you know, the, the ministry of exorcism and the ministry of of just dealing with the demonic is not a ministry of, of necessarily fighting the devil. It's a ministry of, of winning people over to Christ. Do you see the difference? Like th that's the emphasis. The emphasis isn't about, you know, and don't get me wrong. You know, everyone knows I, I love me some hardcore, you know, and I love metal and all that stuff. But the reality is, is what's really happening is, learning to get people to say no to their idols and yes to Christ. And that, and this is really important because there's people who this happens to charismatics, you know, I, I've seen it. They get distracted on, you know, trying to fight the demons and the whole time they don't understand that they're just, the devil's got them chasing their tail when really what they need to be working on is reconciling people back to God Mm -hmm. You know, getting people to a place to where they're saying yes to God instead of no. But that's not fun. It's not fun to do that. It's, it's, it's like not, not as fun. romantic. It isn't. And 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 you wanna know, you wanna know something's crazier? Just speaking from experience, it's a lot tougher. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a lot tougher to get someone to start saying no to their passions and no to these things and 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 yes to Christ than it is to get them, you know. But, a little bit of space from from a demon, quote unquote. Well, because you don't have to change who you are. Right. You, if 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 what if all you're doing is yeah, everybody hates demons. It's like when Jordan Peterson is like, "Oh, you're trying to fight poverty. You want to fight poverty? Like, who doesn't want to fight poverty? Who's the person who's out there being like, yeah, poverty, poverty for everyone? Like, let's all have poverty. It's like, dude." And it's the same thing. It's like, who's the person really who's out there like, yes, the demons. Yes, bring on the demons, more demons. But it's a totally different thing to be like, oh, I have to change now. Oh, I'm going to have to all these things that I've enjoyed, these things that give me pleasure, that are regular habits for me. I'm going to have to stop doing them. Ooh, can't I just fight demons? Can't I just fight demons? Hey, <laughs> yeah, I mean... But just a minute ago, you said, I mean, everybody knows I like hardcore and metal. What did that have to do with, what were you saying there? You were well, like, because the imagery, one of the reasons why hardcore and metal, especially in, like in a Christian context, is so great. It's because the, the the poetic imagery that's used is, you know, battling against darkness, which is great. I'm not sure. knocking it, you know, but it it has its time and its place. But when it comes down to the really nuts and bolts of what it means to to bring, to minister to someone. Right. In this context. Right. Like. It's not about those movements, you know, of like, um, you know, <laughs> slaying the demon and all that stuff. Right. It, it really is about getting people to repent and to humble themselves before God, because that's that's where the devil's got them. Right. That's that is where their souls are, are really entrapped. Right. Um, so I think that's that was my whole point with that. Is, sure. I just didn't. I was like, I was waiting for the connection to be made. I said, no. That so makes sense, I, though. Yeah. yeah. 
that's why I'm here. Um, so then, uh, I had a follow up question. I can't remember what it was. Cyprian, you look like you got something to say. He's laughing. You're putting me on. You're putting me on the spot. Yeah, seems like it seems like you'll do all right. Well, if not, I mean, I'll keep going because I think this is, <laughs> this has been brought up a couple times. So I'm just since people had asked about you know kind of quote unquote neptic tradition and like what watchfulness and all that stuff. I mean, I, I just think it's something that um, yes is talked about in a certain context, monastic context, and all that stuff. But it's just. Every Orthodox Christian is called to become, to be watchful um, over their soul. And so this gets into, you know, again, all things are, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial, Mm. you know? So living a sober life, like, like take for instance right now, right? So with the solar eclipse, right? You know, um, okay. There was, it got to the point where, you know, there is, um commentaries on the conspiracies commenting on the solar eclipse like that's how it it got right but i i think just two things i would say um the one thing just kind of as a fun little side is um just i don't i want to say i don't think people understand how portents work those who really understand how that works so it's not so much about like see guys nothing happened that's not how portents work. You get you get a warning for something, and then it's in time those things play out. So I'm just throwing that out there, right? It's it's for the same thing where people speaking about like prayer, people like say their prayers and think like, oh, okay, whatever. It's like you're you're not looking for the quote unquote experience in the prayer. It's actually about how that plays out for you, you know, the next morning mm-hmm. after you pray at night. Like that's anyways, that's a whole nother thing. But the thing that's more important to bring up is that, um, you know, everyone is, you know, everyone's, you got these people who they want the red heifer, you know, they want, you know, they're like the evangelical versions of uh, um, Ahmadinejad. Remember that guy, right? Who was trying to bring the Mahdi, you know, and, you know, let's, let's, let's really push the buttons to, to, to bring Armageddon, right? So we saw the fervor of all these people getting caught up and, and you know, okay, yeah, let, let's go, let's go. We, we want to get this show on the road. And the thing that that is so often lost for those people who are just like, yes, you know, I want to see things are so terrible. It's like, you know, we, we need to continue to pray for God to have mercy Um why because he's not slack in you know in regards of what people can what man considers slack christ isn't you know chilling on the beach just kind of like yeah i guess i'll get there when i get there right the nothing but mercy 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 and when you begin to realize that all these things that people are like kind of chomping at the bit for you know, um, wanting the overtop experiences and, you know, just that stuff, that's, that stuff is not only terrible when it, when it does come, but again, to the point of tonight's show, long before those things are happening in the material world, manifesting people's, this is, this is why it's such a problem because when those things come, people's inner life are so deteriorated that you don't need, you know, a Nephilim, you know, nine foot tall Nephilim to come through your mall. You're the Nephilim. You've, <laughs> you're the one who's pillaging and ransacking and, and doing all those things. You're the one who's the portal for evil in this world. Mm. Right. And so mm. that, that's what, you know, all the people who are looking for their stuff, it's like, they don't, again, they're not looking to keep the inside of the cup clean, you know? That's that's my point with that. No, I mean, and I think that ultimately, I think that like um, that's a hard word because it just from my own experience, it's just like, well, okay, so it truly is 
just the monotony of day-to-day -day life. You know, it's, it truly is just repentance. It truly is just having to like find, you know, it's someone. Not sexy. No, it's not sexy. It's like someone said, I can't remember what that movie was that came out, Arrival, with the aliens where they had to learn how to like talk with the aliens or whatever. Um, and one of the people in a meeting shared one time that it was like, well, duh, I could be sober if I was doing stuff like that. Cause then I'm, you know, then I'm stimulated, then I'm doing something, but mm -hmm. just having to run to Costco for the third time this week, it's like, that's the kind of stuff that gets me. And like, I agree. It's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to plan, plan out a mundane day and, you know, know that, you know, but actually at the same time, it's like, okay, so what check mundanity off another thing, another thing on a long list of things that doesn't really bother me anymore because like there's this whole other meaning now behind it and it's like okay it's another one of those things of well have you tried it yeah it's really well, the thing about too in regards of i mean even like again the spiritual life and i don't know what people think it is you know and and even for people like monasticism is a beautiful thing um but monasticism is learning to find christ in the mundane yeah you know it, it's like the the day in and day out of obedience and 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 silence and watchfulness and patience. I mean, again, it, well, where, where else could he be found though? Father, I think that that's kind of the thing, right? That it's like Christ can't be found in the novelty. This gets, I mean, this is what we were talking about last time about like, as someone who like lived a life for a period of my life that was chock full of novelty and had all kinds of experiences that people will never have. Right. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, <laughs> it's it's like you, there's a desensitization process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was the I was the least sober. I was the most bored. And that's true of like everybody that I've encountered who's had success in the entertainment world, mm -hmm. who's had success in all of these. I mean, isn't that fundamentally back to Diddy? Like, isn't that fundamentally what the problem is? The problem is that now you have to search for the next high and it's got to be this much higher. And so you end up in debauchery and degeneracy and all of these things because you need to go the next level up. And I think that people don't realize that like, that's what you're doing searching for the, okay, the red heifer. Okay, well now the red heifer is not going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So now you need the next thing. Oh, the eclipse crosses with the old one on a town called Rapture. Now you need to go. Uh, now it needs to be the and each time Nineveh. it needs to be bigger and it's bigger. Nineveh. Nineveh. Oh yeah, <laughs> nine cities, nine cities named Nineveh. And it's like now it's got to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's got to be the spectacle's got to be more and more and more. And it's like actually, actually, it's in those like well. It's funny because that played out, right? Forgive me. It's just go ahead, please. I mean, that played out, right? That's that's what well, that was the homily yesterday. But you know, the real eclipse was was yesterday, was Sunday. You know, with the Annunciation, exactly, and, and the Day of the Cross. That was the real eclipse. And the reason why I'm saying that is it's it's important because no one saw that eclipse for what it was. Sure. No one, no one cared. You know what I mean? Um, everyone's caught up in, well, you know, no one, meaning the world, whatever. And that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Everyone's looking for the sensational, like, where's the, you know, the cicadas are coming. Like, all this stuff is, is happening. But really, the whole time, something so much more beautiful and profound happened. The eclipse, the mother of God, the moon, the son of God, right? Her, her son's cross like that that eclipsing there and that that combining of, of those two lights that was the more profound thing and it's the same thing that happened in 20 like we've talked about you know it's like while the world was watching and, and looking all this stuff happen you know the lockdowns it's like something so much more profound was happening in the churches right and then pentecost happened and it's like you know, with the with the summer of love and the BLM riots. While everyone's looking at that, something so much more profound was happening. And the the world, as led by the devil, gets everyone distracted because that's what the devil does. Like, look over here, look over here. Right. So 
George Floyd and get people riled up and, and racism and we're at enmity and there's no justice and this and that. Well, five days later, right? Five days after George Floyd happened, we had our Pentecost, right? Like the Eastern Orthodox Church had her Pentecost, not anyone else, right? That's not an accident, right? Because the, that's that gets us back to this. You, you start learning to see the patterns of the enemy, right? There's a little bit of activity. Here's some clamor. Here's this. Here's that to get you distracted. And that's part of watchfulness. When you see temptations coming and you're like, oh, and you're tempted, you want to become fearful, anxious, angry, all those things, it's there to get you distracted. Why? Because it's there to pull you away from what Christ is doing, right? Christ already dealt with race. He did it in Pentecost. But no one saw that. Definitely no one saw it in 20 because they're too busy, you know, with all the other stuff, right? Christ already conquered death, right? He conquered death. <laughs> That's what the whole thing with the Passover and going into Pascha, he conquered death. But everyone was preoccupied with death and trying to find another way to escape death during 20, right? And then Christ, you know, he gave us life and he united us with, like, that's the real MR, MR, that's the true mRNA infusion, right? The hypostatic union, mm. right? God, you, you know, God uniting, Christ uniting, you know, the his two natures in God and man in Christ, right? But everyone was busy looking, excited about, you know, getting the protein spike. So this this reality, you can see how these things play out. And when you start seeing these patterns on the, on the, you know, I'm not, I'm nothing. I'm obviously, you know, barely articulate, but how can I see these things? Because this is the pattern. I just see the pattern of my own life on the micro. You live the life. You, you live the life that you can begin to see the patterns out there. And it isn't something wooey wooey. It's literally like, you know, keeping the commandments of Christ, praying consistently when you don't want to the day in and the day out, that's that's the that's the power of discipline in Christ is that you begin to be transformed and you begin to now see the world with you know Christ like you you have a transforming of your mind you have the mind of Christ you see these things for what they are right and that's been our whole thing is don't get duped again people right understand you know what's going on because again it could be anything Right. We could we could wake up tomorrow and all, all over, you know, it's Superman, Zod speaking through everybody's phones or whatever. He's like, well, we're here. You know, we've come through. We were waiting for the right time for the dimension key through the eclipse. And now, thanks to your great scientists at CERN, we're here, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. It, it could be anything now, but we shouldn't be phased. Right. We shouldn't be phased because we're like, yeah. You're you're just here doing all this stuff to get to get us distracted. I think I think I really, really could be wrong about this, but I think it was um oh who um father forgive me, what was the saint that wrote the garden? Um Saint um The Garden? Yeah. Man. Saint Yakovos? No, not Saint Yakovos. Anyway, there's a saint. And I can't forgive me. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, who said that the very first thing that a demon tries to go for to get you to stop praying or to interrupt your prayer is to agitate you. And that's like one of the first tools that they use. And so like used on the micro works on the macro. And it's like, okay, well, what's the first thing to do? I mean, what's the first thing that most people do is they get up and read the paper or they, they get on their phone yeah. and they get agitated. And it's like, well, if you're not prayerful, if you're not like seeing that stuff, it's like, well, of course you're going to get worked up. Mm -hmm. Um, Branchinov, Branchinov, oh, yeah. yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I, that's always resonated with me because that's like one of the very first things. It's like, um, like if you're in the shower, suddenly you're getting, I'm getting, I, I am getting really pissed off at like my second grade PE teacher for like no reason. I'm just like dude, you were kind of a jerk. And it was like, and I was right. I, I don't know if I should have been doing that, but whatever. But like, as soon as the agitation comes, then my, my peace is gone. Like any, any resemblance of peace I have is gone. And then suddenly I'm, I'm all agitated. I'm all, 
Can I stop but, you real quick? Because you hit something please. really profound. So one of the things, and this is why I'm just saying, you know, it's tough. Um, it's good, you know, people to go to their priests and ask them questions about these things because it's really easy to take this stuff out of context. But, for instance, daydreaming. Shouldn't daydream. And I say that people are like, what? Okay, whatever. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can have, you know, profound encounters, but also more importantly, you can have an ongoing, growing connection with God, you know, in the Holy Spirit to Christ through, you know, like that's all possible. But that requires, you know, the the temple to be clean, like your heart and your mind. So if this makes sense to anyone, our whole society right now is all about encouraging this type of, dis, you know, distraction, which fundamentally becomes this kind of zombie-like state of daydreaming that people are kind of perpetually in, right? Well, that's that's problematic because... It's it's the opposite of the type of watchfulness that the fathers talk mm. about, that our tradition is fundamentally trying to get us to all do, which is to be watchful and to pray without ceasing, like St. Paul says, right? Mm. But you can't pray without ceasing if you're if you don't even think that it's a problem. So if you're like, Yeah, I get up and get on my phone, this and that, right? I'm talking to Orthodox Christians. Yeah, I get up on my phone, first thing I do, check the news, this and that. Okay. Everything's lawful, but not everything's beneficial. It's like, <clears throat> does God love you? Yes. You know, are you are you saying you're a bad person? Not necessarily, but it's not about necessarily like good or bad or whatever, but it's like something higher and better. Hmm. Right? It's higher and better. Stop looking at it like, well, if I do this, I go to hell. If I don't, it's like, no, no, no. It's like, okay, like, you know, God loves you. That's great. But, you know, do you, how close do you want to get with God? Sure. Right? Well, and it's the sickness thing. Forgive me, Father. It's it's also, which is why orthodoxy is like the orthodox worldview of the church as a hospital is so profound, and that you know salvation is really because we're sick. You know, it's so easy then to understand. You know that it's like, well, look, you're sick. You're not like you've got the flu, whatever it is. And it's like, well, how are you going to behave? You could stay up till 3, 3 a.m. drinking vodka shots, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, eating candy bars, and you've got the flu. Are you going to be better in the morning or are you going to be worse? Mm -hmm. You know, like, are you going to drive yourself to? And so I think that, you know, just, just even that, that it's like, well, do you want to stay sick? Do you want to stay sick or like? And, and yeah, maybe it's, it's hard to, to break something, but it's like, well, then how do I get well? And I think what you, I, I think what you're saying, what's coming, like what's coming to me is, you know, whether it's daydreaming, whether it's scrolling through your phone, that it's like, it's about noise versus signal, mm -hmm. you know, and that it's like, and the still small voice, right? Mm -hmm. The unceasing prayer is so that the still small voice, the signal can get its way, can make its way through. And it's hard to hear. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to be actively doing it. But if there's all this noise around, forget about it. All right. Forget about it. But I think it's the orientation to get back to like our initial thing, Andrew, of like orientation toward Christ. I mean, how would you even, rec if, you, if you don't have the orthodox phronema, how would you even recognize mm -hmm. that getting up and looking at your phone and getting agitated is noise and not signal? No like, you might actually think it's signal because you're like, but I'm watching all Christian stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Right? Like, it's all Christian stuff. And it's like, how could this is sit? This is the signal. This right. is Vody, Vody Beecham or whatever telling me how bad the gays are. Right. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's that's signal. And it's like, nope. Right. No, that's noise. No. And he does. I mean, I don't blame, you know, I forget it was. Again, I'm the same. The name escapes me. It was like we don't host any particular animosity towards people who are like that. Like I don't. I try not to anyway, because it's like, well, no, you're sick. Like how how would I pass judgment on you? How would I be able to say like, you know, there but for you know to use AA, but there but for the grace of God, like go I like I'm I'm that person tomorrow. I could absolutely 
like start my big thing would be YouTube shorts. If I got back on YouTube shorts again, it's like, man, you become, I become emotionally unregulated. Incredible. That's the new addiction, bro. I know. I know. It's a real I, thing. I mean, it's tick TikTok and YouTube shorts is the new addiction for sure. And, and it, it, what's worse is stuff. Their algorithm's terrible. It's like, it's not, it's like, it's not even giving me stuff that's like, I'm super interested. It's like literally like, do you remember that part in Idiocracy where he's watching like, Al My Balls? It's literally like content of that level. It's just a guy like, it's just like, they're just like suggesting it's, I don't know what it is. It's like this, like most base, like, oh, people slipping and falling or getting hit in the balls or like whatever. Well, the thing is beyond that is it kind of brings us back to last week, but it's like, I mean, it's trying to chase that dopamine hit. Sure. Yep. So the it's, novelty, it's just like a slot machine where yeah. you just keep pressing the button because you didn't win. You're looking for the where's the winner? Where's the winner? Exactly where's the winner? Because it. it's sometimes yeah. it's like, I mean, not to be that guy, but you know, it, it, it's not just the content; it's that. Yeah. It's, yep. Because because you can Absolutely. even have because there are shorts of like stuff like that's interesting content, but it's it's mm-hmm. the it's the novelty, it's the newness. It's like you know, okay, let me mm-hmm. I want to win. Really, yeah. That's that's what ho- that's what really hooks you, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's so. a there. I I had a um interesting set of dinners with a guy who was a. Uh, I've told this story a couple times, but I don't think on here. Who was like a third generation game machine maker, like slot machines and these other amusement oh. games, and he was telling me like he was Greek. So his family had been doing this for like three generations. They'd been making these machines. And he was telling me that like they put dead buttons. They put all kinds. He said there's all kinds of things on these machines that do nothing. But we know exactly that if we light this up and do this, that you will stay on that game longer. Wow. He said, but the button's dead. It does nothing. But it just lights and says, press me. And that if like we'll put these things in this place, and then if if we'll make something move at this time, and then if we'll blank out the screen and then bring something, he's like, we know how to keep you there, and it's all it has nothing to do with how much you're winning, wow. and it has everything to do with the embodied experience that you're having in front of this machine. Man, that's bleak. That's bleak. Although but do, I get but it. You, do you think? But do you think that Google, who owns YouTube? and TikTok do not have on staff people who have this knowledge and have specifically programmed this app to to be addictive. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it like measures like your pupil dilation. Like, like, I'm saying it's like, how long are you on a how long are you on a page? How long are you on it? It's like, okay, what is the algorithm? And like, uh, I've even like, I don't know, it's like, so being careful about what you're feeding the algorithm because it's like, oh, I could watch, you know, I'm on like Apple Music or Spotify. It's like, oh man, I wonder what's up with that band. Like, I don't know, like Alien Ant Farm or something like that. It's like, man, I haven't heard that song in a long time. Like, but I don't really want to start getting like 2000 rock like Mm -hmm. suggestions, you know? I don't really want to like do that. So then like, now I'm putting more thought into it. And then, like, my attention is being diverted somewhere else. And now it's like, okay, well, now I have to keep the algorithm happy, too. Like, I or keeping the algorithm going the way that I want it to. And I just, it's a whole big mess. But. Well, but it's all, it's all anti-vigilance. Oh, yeah. I know. I think that's, At the end of the day, it's all the opposite of vigilance. Well, it's worshiping entertainment because you're like, I don't want my entertainment to be anything less than perfect. So I will give it my attention in order to make things better and more what I want them to be. And so it is what it is. But that's so that's so wild. Yeah, it's so wild. It's so wild that we've reached this point. It's almost it's almost worse it's almost worse than the ditties to bring it like full, full circle to Diddy, right? Because we could talk about whatever was inside his twisted mind, you know, of what his fantasy world was. Cause that's basically what the whole phenomenon of this guy was. Yeah, he had a he's, fantasy world. Diddy's like every other not, guy though. I mean, if you have exactly, money, yeah. if you have unlimited money, unlimited time, and you don't have that's Christ, it. you're going to be Diddy. Like you're, or, or you're going to be, you're going to be whoever. Like that's, that's it. 
that that's one of the big problems with the whole like you know red hat crusader is you think mm-hmm. that you're so moral but it's like look man if you don't have christ and you have ultimate like you know that's where like people's envy gets kind of insidious right because it's like look mm-hmm. are, are you mad about what they've done or are you just mad that are you just a hater you know what i mean because the reality is mm-hmm. is those people get like that because they got a limited resources and time that's all that's it that, that's, that's what it. happens to people is you is and that's kind of like the big thing you know i think that's another part we're saying and that's why the real vigilance is like not seeing your heart going that way it's not even so much like that's great you can be like i, I want to kind of you know put the filter on and not have these things come across my my desk you know in regards to the algorithm but the real thing is, is like, why are you even thinking about that in the first place, right? Because your orientation, your dis, your disposition is to wanting to be entertained and all, you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like, why, well, why do you want to be entertained? Like, that's the vigilance. The vigilance is it, isn't like, how can I keep salacious material coming across my screen? The vigilance is like, why am I even putting the time in to care this about the it. screen in the first place. Yeah. This is so it. What is what is my orientation? What am I living my life for? Yeah. This is right? it. What am I living my this life for? And that's why when people, you know, again, this just, you know, I, I'm all about whatever. I sent you guys a thing. Oh, um, you guys can check it out, but I'm really grateful this for is. it. Um, but I, I'm kind of on this thing where people having a very naive understanding of what salvation is and um, because of this, this, whatever this video, but, um, it's like plenty of Christians, quote unquote, who, you know, I said the prayer I'm saved, I'm good, whatever, but it's like, okay, what's the fruit of that? Where, what is, Mm -hmm. what is your heart pine after? Right. Does your heart pine after prayer and what is prayer? Right. And it's, you know, prayer isn't just supplicating God, right. That's only one aspect of prayer. What is your heart pining after, right? That's where you start to understand, man, where do I really stand with Christ? Hmm. I, you know what I mean? What is, where is my heart really, right? And I don't mean like we all sin or fall short to the glory of God, but you know what I'm talking about at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, you're spending more time running from God, being mad at God, you know, running after something else. Or are you chasing, you know, my heart panteth over the, as the deer panteth over the waters. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the point of, that's the point of being vigilant is so that you can watch these temptations. It's not that you could be perfect and, you know, be morally clean, but that your heart would be available and ready for the love of your soul. And that's, and that's the core thing about all this is, whether we're talking about JP, whether we're talking about, you know, reform theology or whatever the thing is, is it's really about engaging the living God who is a love of your soul and really wanting to, to be with God, hmm. right? Not just like not get out. Of, I don't want to go to hell. Like, okay, that's mm-hmm. great. That's the slave, right? Okay, mm-hmm. great. You know, it's like, it's, it's pretty great to be, you know, whatever, a boss and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's the soldier, right? But, but getting to the point of being a son is like, I just, man, I really, I'm falling in love with God. And I really do love being with God. Mm-hmm. That's the point. And that's all experience. It can't be like, it's not intellectual. So that's, hey, that's my comment. Yeah, yeah. You can never, that, that's, some, that's a place that you can never come to intellectually. Yeah. No. Well, you, you probably think you could. But not, not, not really. Well, of but, course, of course you would. Of course you would think. That, of course like, you would think that you. Could. I mean, yeah, I've heard um, people be like, "Well, what does it mean to love God?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, "Oh crap, I don't have that." But I'm working on it. But anyway, gentlemen, that's two hours, and um, yes, sir. I think that's that. But uh, feel free to reach out to us at contact at royalpath.network. That's our general. Um, reaching out um and then there's andrew at royalpath.network several people still reach out to me i think there's a couple people or like one person that's saying like i've reached out no one's reached back that's pretty common um i think we'll eventually get better about that but as of right now i mean 
I, or maybe I, not. Or maybe not. Well, I <laughs> or maybe that's just what it is. I screen it generally speaking, and it's usually when I'm right in the middle of something else. And if it's like, I need to talk to Father Turbo, like my my husband is about to leave me or something like that. You know, whatever. It's like I would, you know, I really talk to, me, talk to your priest. I was like, yeah, yeah. Then, there's like, okay, there's a sense of urgency there, but like this is, you know, that's maybe it's not the best. But anyway, anyway. And then whenever we talk about music, it goes on a playlist on Spotify and Apple Music. It's like Royal Path Podcast Playlist. Um, so then also we do, there's the merch store, royalpath.store. We don't see any of that money. It goes to the people who make it and then to the parish. Um, and then uh, uh, thank you. Scola, Scola Coffee. Scola, Scola Coffee. Coffee. Scola Coffee. Please continue to look into that investigate that as you as you see fit i think it's um i think it's pretty good coffee and i'm i'm kind of a dude that doesn't really like a lot of coffee right now especially right now i'm just not really into coffee right now and it's it's roasted it's roasted at mount tabor school it's roasted at right? the mount tabor school yes right yes and that's, and that's that's the important part so you are supporting orthodox education with every cup of coffee there you go. And the link is in the description. You can get a caffeine buzz and then a buzz knowing that you're you're helping a little child learn the correct there way or or like a go. way that's 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 pleasing to God. Um and then um it feels like feels like that's it. I can't remember. That's it feels, it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's thank it. you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.